Welcome. My name is Jody Adams, and I'm a licensed massage therapist, and I absolutely enjoy teaching people how to incorporate essential oils in their day-to-day -day lives. So one of my favorite passions is cooking. I thoroughly enjoy cooking, and I love to try different recipes and even some of my family recipes or um, just new recipes that are some of my favorites. I love to change them all the time. So one of my latest is using essential oils in all my favorite recipes and even my new recipes as well. So I want to urge you to take this opportunity to learn how to use essential oils in your favorite recipes, your family handed down recipes, or even just new recipes that you want to try. So why doTERRA? I get this question asked more than anything, and I want to go over it briefly before I get into a few recipes that I want to go over so you can really understand how to use essential oils in your recipes. So why doTERRA? One of the, we'll start off with their co-impacting sourcing. So doTERRA sources its oils from all over the world. So each oil is derived from its indigenous environment. When they grow and harvest, in a particular altitude and climate, season, and the soil, you end up with a far superior product. So this is where doTERRA's commitment to purity begins. The second reason is because of their certified pure therapeutic grade. This is really important because there are zero fillers, synthetics, dyes, and pesticides or contaminants of any kind. They are just pure, unaltered oils grown from experienced farmers in their land. So doTERRA created this standard as a promise of purity, and each and every batch is third-party tested. So you can be confident that their oils are pure, potent as well. So how incredible is that? So I would like to next go over the three different uses. I always like to touch on this in case someone's not familiar on how to use essential oils. So the three different ways are topically, aromatically, and internally. So let's dig into topically a little bit. I try to tell people not to overthink it because there's so much information out there. So topically, a great area to start off with is in the bottom of your feet. I like to start off with the bottom of your feet because the skin is the thickest in the bottom of the feet, so you're less likely to be sen sensitive to have any skin sensitivities. So if you might be um, hurting somewhere, that's also a great area to apply it. And I like to just apply a little bit, uh, one or two drops in the palm of my hand with some fractionated coconut oil and massage it into the area of discomfort. Another great area is the pulse points. So you can just put a drop of essential oil on the pulse points, that way you can smell it throughout the day. So let's go over it aromatically. You can simply, Undo the lid, unscrew the lid, and just smell it to get the really nice aromatic benefits. Another what nice way is to get a diffuser. Put a couple drops in a diffuser. That's the easiest way. And that way you can be getting the benefits all day. And if you're, you know, if you're one of those people that have that afternoon drag and you just want to reach for a pop, don't reach for a pop. Just simply take a drop of frankincense, a drop of peppermint, and you can even do wild orange along with that into the palm of your hand. Rub your hands together and really take a deep breath in. Really get that expansion into the rib cage, out wide, front and back. Really expand those lungs and get the benefit that way. So let's talk about internal use. Now, when I talk about internal use, I'm strictly only talking about doTERRA. That's the only brand that I trust internally. Please do not assume it is okay to use any brand of oil internally as purity varies greatly. 
So one great way that I love to is put it in my water so I can make sure I get my daily intake of water. Two of my favorite ones is grapefruit and tangerine. But you can use a, a lot of the different citruses, um, peppermint, lemon, lime. So just make sure when you're, when you're talking about internal use, like for instance, our bottles actually say whether you can actually use that oil for internal use. So you want to make sure before you just put add something in your water, um, an essential oil in your water, that you can use it for internal use. And if you have any questions on that, please contact me. I'll be posting my, my link on how to get a hold of me. So when we talk about internal use, the next thing we can talk about is cooking. So how do you use essential oils with cooking. So I want you to remember these three words, convert, dilute, and delay. Make sure you write those down and we're gonna go over that. So one of the many reasons why people incorporate essential oils into the recipe is because for some, making things life simple. Now a lot of us are in such a hurry. So let's just simplify it a little bit. So instead of, you know, slicing up all the herbs or, you know, using zest off of, you know, a lemon or a lime, you can simply use one to two drops of essential oils. How amazing is that? And it saves you so much time. What I like to do personally is do half and half. So I still love using, because I love to grow a garden. I always help my dad with the garden. So what I do is I'll use some fresh herbs and then add some essential oil so you get the benefit of the essential oil as well. So let's, let's get into the three words that I was talking about earlier. Convert, okay, remember that essential oils are very concentrated. So you really want to be careful on how much essential oil you use. A good rule of thumb is to use one drop of oil to replace one teaspoon of a specific ingredient in your recipe. So dilute. Another thing to remember when cooking with essential oil is that they should be diluted in a lipid first. So this not only keeps you safe, but it helps to ensure that the oil and the flavors disperse throughout the whole dish. So it's not just in one spot. You take a sample and you're like, oh, that's pretty strong. It's dispersed in the, by diluting, it's dispersed in the whole dish. So let me give you an example for savory dishes. So you would dilute in a bit of olive oil or coconut oil. And for sweet dishes, you could use honey or syrup works very well. So let's talk a little bit about delay. Okay, for hot recipes, wait until the end before you add any type of essential oils. Because remember, essential oils are very volatile. For this reason, with high heat, you lose the, the benefits of the essential oils. So essential oils for cooking. So let's just, I wanna give you some examples of what you might do with some of the essential oils. We'll go over a few. Lavender. Since this oil is considered one of the most gentle, I recommend including lavender in a dish if you like a dish that's delicate or if you want a floral benefit to it or aroma. So peppermint. Peppermint is a great one. I love to use peppermint in a lot of my dessert dishes. I love to make chocolate fudge. So I just, you know, simply just put a couple drops of peppermint in and it's, that's enough for the whole dish. And peppermint is linked to increase levels of energy. So if you add a drop to your next brownie batch, you might have a pep in your step. <laughs> so let's discuss um, citrus oils. Whether you use lime, lemon, grapefruit, or even tangerine oil, you will enjoy these oils in various recipes. Smoothies are a great choice for this. Bergamot is a citrus, Although I want to highlight this separately, try bergamot in scone recipes and treat, and treat to take advantage of its excellent pairing with mild flavors. 
So let's discuss cinnamon. I love to use cinnamon in um, my peanut butter fudge. It works amazing. Cinnamon essential oil works very well with other sweet dishes to replace the, the, the powder cinnamon bark that you typically would put in. Again, I like to use a little bit of both. That's the beauty about, about being your own chef. You can do what you want to. Just explore. You know, open your eyes, open your horizons, and just explore. French toast, cinnamon French toast is another option. An extra cinnamon boost in cinnamon rolls. I love cinnamon rolls. Um, but it is extremely important to dilute. Cinnamon is very strong. It, it has the... It's sensitive to the membrane. So remember, one to two drops in the whole recipe. So ginger, add ginger to a sweet treat, like ginger snaps, gingerbread, spicy drinks. Thyme, as a savory flavor, add thyme to a main course dish, especially when meat is involved. It's always good to add that herb flavor, it blends well with soups, stews, and baked goods as well. Now let's discuss fennel. What I would encourage is explore before you go to fennel. Fennel is a very strong flavor, so get comfortable with some of the other essential oils before you virtue into using fennel. Cilantro. Cilantro is great with sauces, dips, savory cuisines. So now that you have some, some ideas, we can explore. So let's go over a few of my recipes. Lazy avocado sushi. Okay, so you sushi lovers out there, you'll have to try this and tell me what you think. I absolutely like, love this one. One avocado, which are healthy fats, one cup of brown sugar cooked, four tablespoons of soy sauce, one to one half teaspoon of rice vinegar, a toothpick of ginger essential oil. That's also another rule of thumb. These oils are very potent. So what you can do is simply, for some of the stronger oils, you can simply take a toothpick, put into the essential oils, and then stir it around in your dish. Sesame seeds. Essential oils that you could use are lemongrass, lime, wild orange, and then you can top it with some of the toppings that I have used is raw salmon, tuna, and um, yellowtail. So you can do cooked shrimp, fresh pineapple diced, and fresh mango. Now how incredible does that smell and taste? I can just smell it as, as I think about the recipe. So you can also do coconut shavings, lemon sliced thinly, lime sliced thinly, fish sauce, and peanuts. Now all you sushi lovers, when you try that, let me know what you think. So I love home, good home cooking food as well. So rosemary mashed potatoes mm, is one of my favorite. You have to be careful with the rosemary because the rosemary is very strong. So four medium potatoes, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of oil, one small red onion chopped, two clove of garlic chopped, two drops of rosemary essential oil. Now what I would do, depending on how strong you want the rosemary, is you can either do a toothpick or just start off with one drop and taste it and see what you think. One half cup of milk, salt to taste, and pepper to taste. Now, doesn't that sound delicious? So let's go over some, <laughs> some sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. And before we know it, Thanksgiving is gonna be here, so this is an excellent dish for that. Four tablespoons of butter melted, four tablespoons of honey. I like to use local honey to really help our immune system as well. Juice of a lime two teaspoons of ground allspice, eight drops of cinnamon bark essential oils, five drops of ginger essential oils, two pounds of sweet potatoes peeled and cut into one half thickness sliced, kosher salt, 
fresh grounded pepper, black pepper to taste. And I also sometimes like to cut back on that black pepper and use black pepper essential oil. Fresh thyme sprigs for garnish, that's optional. And once you get used to this recipe, you can actually play around with maybe even adding some thyme to that if you like that taste. Are you ready to make some sweet potatoes? And if you have any questions on this recipe, let me know. Okay, so let's go over one more recipe. I don't wanna overload you with tons of recipes. Okay, so let's do tilapia. Let's, let's put some protein in there. So one to one half teaspoon of, of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of brown sugar, one half teaspoon of garlic powder, one half teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of salt, one drop of cumin essential oil, one fourth teaspoon of chili powder, one fourth teaspoon of black pepper. And again, I always love to use some essential oil, so I like putting the black pepper essential oil in there. One fourth teaspoon of dry oregano. And I also like using the um, oregano essential oil, but you have to be very careful with the oregano because it's a very strong oil. So I recommend using like the just, I'll do a drop, but start off until you get comfortable with how strong these oils are. Start off with a toothpick and some olive oil, and then put it onto the dish. One pound of tilapia fillets and one tablespoon of olive oil. Now, how does that sound? Doesn't that sound incredible? So now what? Are you ready to get started with essential oils? So for any one of you that had someone that referred you to my webinar, please contact them and they'll help you get started on your way with, to learn how to use essential oils. And you know, feel free to follow me. I'm here to help you really get comfortable with essential oils. And if you don't have anyone, then please contact me and I'll help you in your path and how you get your very own essential oils. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to learn a more wellness and natural approach to cooking with essential oils. So hope to see you soon. Thank you.